Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. As a recording of his Thursday, September 22nd, 2022, I am standing in a lake. Not full of water in this spot, full of salt. The Great Salt Lake, just outside Salt Lake City. Also standing on the shoreline, Sean Clark malfunct Sean. Feeling salty. Pours hallowed grounds, things with two heads. I didn't, don't even know how to introduce you. Yes, you were asking when we were driving over here, is this the Great Salt Lake? The answer is yes. Sweet. Your stand, no, it's not, it's salty. Oh, I like, it's, it's salty and sweet. So I have no idea what my episode is gonna be about today. You have a game plan. Yes. I'm driving, you're tagging along, but I'm also tagging along with you, and I'm just gonna film random stuff while you do your episode. That'll come out in like four years. Yeah, usually I, I, I upload the next day, you upload like, you know, a year and a half yeah. to three years later. I do that so I look better in my videos. That way when the video comes out, they'll go, God, he looks good. I'd be like, yeah. Is that what it like is? Four years ago. <laughs> so in 1962, a movie was filmed in Kansas, but also in Utah. The Utah scenes right over there at the Saltaire, I believe it's called. It's a concert venue now, but it was used in, what was it used in? Use your voice. Carnival of Souls. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to start off here and just hopefully we can get inside. Also, take a look at this. This is all salt. There's water way out there. So we're going to do some Carnival of Souls stuff yeah. and then venture off to a lot of other locations yeah, in Utah. It's a busy day today. It's a busy day. I'm inviting you to join me and Sean Clark. Shall you? Nailed it. I didn't know if you were waiting for me to do it. <laughs> no, I just, yeah, I didn't want to, I, I just wanted to see if you'd do it. And oh. you did. You pulled it off. Now in the movie itself, in the early 60s, there was a entire like fun park out here, like a carnival that was abandoned. Yeah. That she was wandering through. Yeah, this was part, wasn't this part of some sort of carnival thing? Yes. It was the carnival of shows. <laughs> you kind of remind me of the, in the cable guy when I he's like, that's what welcome. I'm doing. I'm doing welcome. Yeah. Into the past. I think it was Andy Dick. Medieval times. Medieval times. <laughs> you're, channel, you're channeling Dude, cable guy. I can't believe you picked up on that. That's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> the other thing I'm really excited about is hopefully going underneath this where there's like the pylons and the water because a lot of it was filmed underneath there. Pylons from Land of the Lost are under there? Pylons, stanchions. This kind of almost, yeah, this definitely is original woodwork up here. This is a concert video, it says no re-entry. So I guess once you go in, you can never leave. Come out. They also have no restrooms. But it's like $145 single day general admission. $145? What's $145? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're doing a little remodeling in here, but they said we could come in take a couple of quick photos, but this is a concert venue now. I don't really know how much was actually filmed inside the building. It was mostly exteriors. Here's the stage over here. Now I was here four or five months ago. My parents were in the area, we went down to some of the national parks south of here and kind of went by here, but we weren't allowed in here at this time. But now thankfully the gentleman that's here said we can kind of walk around real quick. It's a pretty big venue. You can overlook the sea out here. It'd be pretty wild to see a concert in here. Just a very expansive dance floor, concert floor. Plus it's the Carnival of Souls. Classic 1962. Horror. All right, got some pretty good info from the owner. He was saying that this is the third building that has been here. There was one in the early 1900s, burned down. 
The second one was built in the late 20s. That is the one that's in the 1962 Carnival of Souls. This one was built, what do you say, 83? 83. 1983, so this is not the exact spot. I don't know how many people realize this is not the one from the movie. It was been rebuilt, it was an old airplane hangar that was brought in, and then the exterior was built on. And he was saying out here are the pylons that the second Saltaire from the film, and he was saying to just drive down this road and we'll be able to see the remnants of it. So maybe be able to match something up over there. Yeah. He also said that this was, he said it was flooded in the 80s for two years, that it, that it actually, the water level was up to the, those little peaks there. Yeah, but nonetheless, quite an impressive structure. The salt, I think it's called salt air. Because, you know, salt, salt sea, salt air. Like a castle. Almost looks like a castle back there. Okay, while we're driving down this road on the little, what do we call it, jetty? I don't know what you call it. It runs parallel. So you got the salt lake, and then there's just randomly someone mowing a, the yard down there. Are. I mean, it's just a huge open field, someone with a regular push mower out here next to the Salt Lake. Just mowing little tufts of grass. Yeah, <laughs> just mowing. Okay, that's completely unexpected, and you can see building off in the distance there. All right, let's get moving. I was not expecting to see someone mowing the salty terrain next to the Great Salt Lake. All right, I do believe we found it. I was matching up the movie where she is driving down a long road. So the place we just were is about a mile, two miles probably, that maybe even two and a half miles that way. You can kind of see where we just were. But if you walk through this area that's kind of grown over, which is very interesting, there's a lock gate over there. You can't drive up, but there's this open gate here that you can kind of squeeze through. And there's some information placards over here as well. Again, foliage all completely grown over. Do they have a date on there? I'm not seeing, I don't see anything. Early as the 1890s when Saltaire was built, perched on wooden pilings five feet in the air. Okay, you see that in the movie. So I wonder if those are still oh, out there. Oh, here it is. Fire twice, ravaged the resort, leaving only charred remains. And see, that's what the, I think the picture's supposed to be the charred remains. But we were kind of matching up the mountains in the background. It's the same mountains with the same humps and everything where her car's driving that way. Today you can see metal structure scraps, old pipes, broken pieces of pottery, and stumps of wood piling still. Uh, what is that? Stal stalwart? Stalwartling? What is Stalwartly that? Stanley. That's Stalwartly Stanley. Stalwartly Stanley. I, I use that word often. Uh, standing, marketing a ghostly outline of once of that once glorious resort. Well, let's go see that ghostly. That's amazing. It's kind of tough to see with the glare, but... I wonder what the deal is with all this concrete on the side. Here's the resort in the distance. See the... You see the mountains in the background that we're walking down there. Telephone poles have been removed as well. I don't know what that is. I was wondering that too. I mean, just... I don't know what all this concrete would be from. You think maybe that that's the torn down resort and then they just scattered it along the shore instead of like hauling it off they're like instead of having a big pile of rubble let's just sh let's just scatter it along what do you, what would you call this this little i call it a jetty but what is it called really i don't even know what it's really called what we're walking this, on? yeah this little walkway out well, roadway i guess it was a road at one point and looking back the other way just to show how far we've traversed so I'm hoping we get to the end of this, we'll see the wooden kind of platforms that were in the movie. Because if it was elevated with this road, we should be able to see those pylons, if I'm using that word correctly, right over here. They may have been removed. I think those might have been, or those could have been, I don't know if they really were, those could have been pieces that were seen in the film. Right there, they're kind of like laid sideways, but they would have been up and down with the resort built across this little waterway here. 
that, that's a that's a big stretch but that could have been one of the little wooden pieces there okay running parallel to where we are you can see some of the wood pieces from a former dock and Sean had a good point he was kind of noticing that it extends out a little more and that dock runs parallel to the area we're walking so we're going to keep continuing and see maybe if we could discover a little bit more but that mountain off in the distance definitely is in the movie we are in the right spot we're in the right spot. Yeah, be careful of those ants. I know one thing Salt Lake City has is a lot of a lot of biting flies, but these ants probably bite as well. Yep, I'm saying they do. You just gotta You don't like ants? Nope. That could have been like from a pillar. Yeah. I mean, that's a big. It's a big chunk. Big chunk. That is a charred piece. You thought this was a bird for a it second? Looked, it looked like a dead duck laying. <laughs> No, it's a piece of wood. I know, I get it now. Is that the fire from the 20s right there that's left oh, over? Look, check it out. And a piece of metal like they described in the Oh, you just stepped right in this ant bed. Look at this. You just stepped in this horrifying ant bed right here. Well, they didn't get on. That's me. your footprint right there. Okay, well. You said you hate hate insects. Well, that's why I'm stepping on them. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, you got a little yeah. little rebar here. Rebar. This, is, this is a piece of it for sure. Okay, we're getting, we're, getting we're finding some remnants. Let's keep going. Okay, watching back some clips from the movie. Seems like the theme park area was here. Driving up there, then you walk. She's going through the desolate, broken down theme park area. And then the resort that she walks upon was like right over here. Sean has taken it upon himself to walk out into the salt. So yeah, you can see where they're coming out of the ground. So there's a scene that she's walking underneath the resort. So the resort would have been right kind of above us. And she's looking that way. And then she's kind of walking that way. And then like the ghostly creatures come out of the water. It's like three or four ghostly creatures like pop out of the water. So the water would have been way up to here. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, you can see, see all these. See the pieces right here. And look at over there, do you see that pattern? Yeah. That was something right there. So the resort would have been directly above us. Because these are they were on these little wooden platforms here. I think somebody just laid those over there? Yeah, I just think they took them. I think somebody did that. But it's clear. You can really line up those hills off in the distance, the mountains over there. There's even a moment where she's kind of looking across the way and she sees some pieces of wood off in the distance. Those are kind of over there still too as well. It's a deep cut, I know. We were also just discussing that two times in the spot it burned down by fire. There's one road in, one road out. Yep. Not the best, I can see why the new one that they built in 83, they put it more towards the land. Yeah. It's probably pretty dangerous to have a fire out. Ooh, I feel like I'm gonna sink into this. Yeah. Plus it's not stable ground at all. That's the other thing. It's like, it's very, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wanna build anything on this ground. I am zoomed in, there's a train going by over there. That train. All right, heading back to the car now, going on to some other spots. All right, so pretty much, this is not only remnants of the resort, but all these, this concrete over here, also ants down here. Chunks of the old amusement park and the old resort scattered along the old road leading out of here. Now you cannot drive up, you have to walk out. There is a massively deep hole right here. Like I tried to look down in there, so it's like almost like a hole here, but that's pretty deep down in there. It's got a big stick. Yeah. Just watch that as a cave. Does it only go down to the bottom of the stick? Yeah. Okay. But still, that could have been, who knows? I thought it was deeper than that. Okay, back down at the end of the road now. I'm just gonna show this and then show. Pretty good walk. It's probably about a good mile hike out there and then a mile back. All right, moving on. Gonna head over. Cover some miles tonight. All right, back at the car real quick, just showing some of the moments from the, the film. You can see that mountain range in the distance. That almost looks like part of the end of the dock there, where she's kind of looking across the shoreline. All right, then one last little quick one there. You can kind of see how the old one, she's kind of walking through the, the ruins of the amusement park. You can see the building, the Saltaire in the background, the second one, using the film. Looks just like the, the new one. It's built just a couple miles away. All right, we took about an hour commute over to Heber City, just notice that open that, that trunk is open over there. And we're gonna get a bite to eat here at the Back 40 Ranch House Grill. 
They both pass by here inside the parking lot's full, which means there's a lot of people here, which means it's probably pretty tasty. A little hometown flavor here in Utah. The Back 40. Ranch House Grill. We get a bite to eat. Look at these, these may be old church pews out front here. Kind of tiny little pews. Yeah, look at the merchandise right there. It says Back 40, eat it. All right, I also got a free sticker here. Heber, Utah, or is it Heber? Well, I need one of those stickers. Hey, you should get a sticker on the way out. They have starters, they have lunch plates. Look at this big fork on the front of this. Do they have chili? I do like chili. Thank you. Oh, this is a little history of the place. The food, welcome to the Back 40 Ranch House Grill. Their goal is to provide the best food and drinks possible. That's a bold statement. The building, the original structure was a ranch house built in the fields behind over 80 years ago. It was moved to its current location in the 1940s and became the Valley's first bar. The north half of the building was built in the 18, 1980s and then they renovated it in 2015. All right, you get credit for this pick. You're the one that, you saw this from the road, you said, let's stop there. Yeah, so that place looks interesting and cool. Why are we over in this area, by the way? Because we are filming some location stuff. I'm doing Silent Night, Deadly Night, which was filmed just down the street. So we're gonna get some grub in us before we start. Silent on. Night, Deadly Night. Look, you gotta go to what Billy got it. Yeah. No spoilers, but you gotta go to Sean's channel to, to see all this. You'll upload it in like three years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is this is a preview. <laughs> It's this a preview. I, this is what I looked like in 2022. <laughs> now this is kind of interesting. I was not expecting to see this on the menu. You know, because they have the, the back 40 burger, they have the circle bar burger, the beyond burger. That's kind of expected. They have meatless, but then roast beef, tacos. But they have a tuna poke bowl. I don't know. I like the seasonal vegetable plate. That looks pretty good. Chicken sandwich? Maybe I'll get a grilled chicken sandwich. That sounds good. Grilled chicken sandwich. They have brought an enormous knife over here. Also the house recipe ketchup. And then one thing I've learned about Salt Lake City is the, the sauce. Playing drums? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fry sauce is like real big here in SLC, even though this is like in the valley. And we're gonna split. I got a chicken sandwich and Sean got a burger, and we're gonna half and half it. So I'm glad we have a big knife. A big knife to split the tasty food with. Oh, yeah, this is what we're dealing with. A little pickle slice over here. Got the cheese on the burger. Oh, it even has some bacon. Oh, it's not a burger, it's a chicken sandwich. Got the lettuce, that looks good. I got a little side salad. And you went with the burger that we're gonna slice in half. A little cheese on that. You went with the fries. You opted, opted out of the salad. I might have some of your fries. Of course you will. And then I went with the side of asparagus. Just totally random. I was like, let's just get some asparagus here. Oh, this bun is soft. You're slicing it down. This is a soft bun. It's a soft bun. Very. I guess I should probably cut mine. There's cheese on here, so what, does that mean that we're both cutting? Are we cutting the cheese? <laughs> I see what you did. There. You can put it right there. That's fine. Okay, I'm not as talented at cutting into burgers as Sean is. All right, grab your grab your slice there. Whichever side you decide. Got it. Got it. Yeah. There it is. Look at that. That's, that's, that's my cheap. piece of bacon right that's there. That's your bacon? Grab it. Because yours is hanging out of that side. Right. Mm. It's a good burger. Let's see how the fry sauce is. All right. It's a big thing here. Let's see. Oh, it's it's like it? the In-N-Out sauce. Like In-N-Out sauce? Probably the same kind of yeah. thing. That's what it tastes like. Yeah, I polished off my half of the burger pretty quickly. Now time for the chicken sandwich. <laughs> pretty good food. Pretty good food here. Farm to table, they call it. From the farm to the table. And just down the way, a block or two, some heavy machinery going by, is this which is used to identify the fire hydrant in the snow. Fun fact, I didn't know that until recently. But there is a very kind of old-timey bowling alley over here. We're not gonna we're not gonna have a riveting game of bowling, but Sean and I both wanted to see this because we both like this kind of architecture. I believe this is called Googie architecture. 
Holiday Lanes. I'm loving this menu. You love the menu? Are you still hungry? No, I'm not, but it's just it, this. Classic. This is, this is classic. Right they have here. a foot long, they sell Snapple. Ice creams. You can always ask for the special flavor. Ooh. With this. Ooh, you know what? Maybe we should get some ice cream. We don't have dessert. Yeah. We get some ice. You know the type of architecture this is called? Uh, no. I think this is called Googie Architecture. Googie? Googie. G O O G I E Architecture. I don't think it's Art Deco, but it definitely has a vibe. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Should we get this? Get some ice cream inside. Really? Let's do some ice cream. We gotta get. We gotta go in here. Yeah. yeah take a look at this place. This I has some one. serious. Retro vibes over here. Look at this. Holiday lanes. Yeah, this is something you see out of like an 80s film. I wonder if this has ever been used in any movie location because this is freaking awesome. Even over there is like the little snack bar area. <laughs> I'm getting like serious retro vibes in here. I mean, look at this. this is amazing. This is like a hidden gem, right? Take a look over here at the, the booths and everything. Even an old Coca-Cola sign up top there. Pretty awesome. Right, we're gonna get a little ice cream. All right, a very thick and tasty shake. This thing is good. I went with a vanilla. And I did look up to see if there were any movies filmed inside there, and there were. There were two different movies filmed inside Holiday Lines here in Eber City. We ordered the same exact thing, vanilla shakes. Two movies filmed in here. What were the two movies? Truth and Consequence with Kiefer Sutherland. Yep. And then also from Terminator 2, what was the actor's name? Edward Furlong. Edward Furlong was in here with Kathy Bates in a movie called A Home of Their Own. Edward Furlong gets into a little scuffle inside there. A young yep. Edward, a young Very Kathy young. Bates as well. Young Edward Furlong. And this is pretty good. How would you rate this? Dude, uh, on a one to 10? Shake wise? Yeah. It's a solid eight. All right, I agree. Pretty, pretty good. Good food here, good meal, and good dessert. As Shaw was just pointing out, the banks that still have the little, little tubes that kind of like, you know, oh, shoot tubes through here. Yeah, he stopped off and filmed something for his episode that he'll upload at some point. Looking over at the Mercantile Company over here and this mural on the side of the road, on the side of the building, I should say. Oh, look at this. This says Acme Motorcycle Refinery. Okay, not refinery. Acme Motorcycle Repair. Got the painting there of the Indian motorcycle on the side. And then take a look up here. This train going by as well. Pretty cool. Okay, over in a neighborhood now, I'm noticing these sunflowers that are over here. Kind of dried up sunflowers, but... Sunflowers, nonetheless. Are you filming flowers? I'm filming flowers because I don't want to give away what you're filming. Oh. SNDN is what I'm calling it for short. SNDN. Oh. That, that's that's your, your project you're working on. SNDN. So the owner of the homestead that you just filmed for your episode, which will come out whenever that's SNDN. That, SNDN. Has said that people do come by the house, but no one, well, he has not seen the movie. Crazy. You, look at, you looking at your phone there? That's crazy. I'm looking at my phone. I'm just looking at something up here. You yeah. texting someone? I'm just, I'm, t yeah, I'm Tom, you know, SNDN. <laughs> <laughs> Am I boring you? <laughs> I, are you? Are you still recording? <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking up? Huh? What are you looking up? I was, I was seeing where stocks, stocks are right now. You trying to figure out what the original name of SNDN was? Yeah. What was it? Uh, oh, it was originally, ti originally titled Sleigh Ride. Sleigh Ride, that's a good name. Hey, we're just kind of driving around still, going to some other spots, but check out this. From this, <laughs> this, this old town here, Heber Old Town. It's kind of neat, they built this old western village. We didn't have ice cream, we could go inside, inside, scoop. It doesn't look like it's open, it looks like it's closed. This it dog like walk. Business. It's out of business. I mean, it looks. I, I don't know. It looks. It empty. might be out of business. Look at this building. This dog wash. Oh, look over there. Is that a gallows? It is. 
What the heck? Oh, there's someone in the gallows office. Yeah, this is pretty dang awesome. Look at this. Looks like a little Knott's Berry. I was gonna say Ghost Town Knott's Berry Farm. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, it's amazing what you stumble on when you're just driving around. I've, I'm, a, I'm very talented at driving through an empty field, filming out the window here. This old train car, train depot, a newer train depot that is also now closed off. All grown over those foliage through here. If it picks up that train depot at the Home Depot. That's true. That's a, <laughs> tie that came out of nowhere. And if you didn't have the money, you could go to the Loan Depot. To the Loan Depot. Mm -hmm. It's all the depots. Mm -hmm. Think this was used in any any films? Yes. I'm just gonna say yes. You're gonna say yes? Yeah. Why not? Which one of the 97 Halloweens was this on? This was in Halloween 6.5. 6 the night he thought about coming home. Hallow <laughs> Halloween Depot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Halloween Depot. Halloween Depot. Shit. He's still driving around, but pulled over. Doesn't look like they're open at the moment, but this place called the Filler Up Coffee Station. Take a look at this beauty. Got the Herbie the Love Bug out front here. Or at least half Herbie the Love Bug. And a 57 Chevy front as well. It says up here that they used to serve food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, shakes and smoothies, tea, hot chocolate ice cream. And there is dinosaur over here. It looks like maybe a Sinclair dinosaur. Oh, I love this. The bee's knees ice cream. Look at that thing, that's cool. Old ice cream truck right there. Almost looks like an old mail truck. And then you got the beehive of activity. Also, I believe Utah is the beehive state. Or the bee state. Something to do with bees. But beeline gasoline up here. Got the ethyl gasoline. Got the regular Sinclair Dino over here. And then these that you see in front of like a shopping mall. Like a, a grocery store back in the day. You, know, you put a quarter in here. You hop in here. Of course, that was when I was a youth. I couldn't do that now. Too heavy for that. Got a little Pennzoil there. Yeah, this is great. And they are open for business, except they're closed for the day. It's already starting to get kind of late in the day, so they're not here. But they got the, all these vintage cars here. Got the one over here, NYPD on the side. Pretty dang awesome. You see a lot of Coca-Cola paraphernalia, but here is a Pepsi-Cola up top there. All right, gonna keep moving on. Ooh, to quote Adam Sandler from Billy Madison, smiley. The beauty of Utah. Doing a lot of driving today, a lot of driving. And I just want to point out how very impressive this barn is. This is an epic barn. I don't know if I've ever seen a barn that rivals and equals this one as far as the magnitude of this barn. It's like a bunker of sorts. That is a barn of epic proportions. Of epic proportions. I'm kind of noticing this train thought maybe it was an inactive train, but it looks like it just parked over there. Is that that caboose? I've seen some years. There's graffiti inside the caboose. You can see inside yeah. it. Party train. Party train. And then up here are some of the some of the wood from the tracks. You are aboarding the party train, Utah. The Utah party train. <laughs> yeah. Horses over here. Oh, 
Little horses. Hi, horsey. Hi. Hi. Got a little scratch there on your chin. Using the pole for like a scratching post. Good to see you, horse. All right, see you later. All right, as the oversized low truck goes by and the sun is setting, a little glimmer there, take a look at this random phone booth in front of this house. Just a random phone booth. I feel like Clark Kent could just walk in here, Superman, Richard Donner style, a 70s Superman could go inside there. It's funny because Sean and I both saw this at the same time. Go, there's a phone booth right there. Going in. Coming out Superman. <laughs> Hi, dude. It'd be great if they, oh yeah, there you go. Little Bill and Ted as well. That's pretty awesome. That is a roadside relic because it's right on the side of the road and it's a relic. I want to know which person does it belong to though? This house or this house? Or is it just something somebody dropped it off? I don't know. I don't know either. I somebody would buy it. Cool. Oh, kind of like bolted up up there. That's awesome. All right, moving on. All right, this is completely unusual and random. Looks to be like a bike path or a walking path or a hiking trail. Looks to be a, kind of a miniature road down there off of, also there's my shadow here, kind of waving the sun behind me. Take a look over here at this Old timey classic car alert. Let me zoom in. The unusual thing about this, it's been sitting there for so long, it has been stanchioned off. There's like wood pylons around it with rope. It's on display here in the middle of this little grassy area. Bizarre. All right, moving on. Ooh, wild turkeys. Hey, turkeys. <laughs> Bunch of wild turkeys there. rummaging through the foliage. See you turkeys. And some more wildlife over here. Got a deer. A couple, actually there's quite Four a few. Yeah. Look at those, awesome. Doing a little grazing. This is turning, we've started off with one subject matter, now it's turning into like wildlife. Never know what's, what you're gonna see here. How about this? I have an idea. You have an idea about the deer? No. About something else? Yes. Should I turn the camera off? Yes. And we ended up here at the fairgrounds. Kind of been a long day. It's very, very late. It's been like a... Oh, look over there. You can see the Capitol building off on the horizon. Stop in here. It's been probably a good 12 or 13 hour days. <laughs> hour day we've been out and about my rental car there. Utilizing the light to Get a little project he's working on. Yeah, look over there, you can see the Capitol building way up on the hill right in the middle of the screen. What a random day. All right, now we're just gonna head out of the fairgrounds. Who knows what's next? There's some pallets in front of that door. Okay, this is pretty awesome. Someone has put a nine and three quarters from Harry Potter on the side of this. I wonder if anyone's tried to run through there through the brick wall there. See? Look at yeah. the nine, someone put the nine and three quarters on there. I don't know. I, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> How random. And that's going to do it for today. The Greater Salt Lake City area. Even though I ventured into lots of other areas around. Well, I almost just fell in that hole. 
kind of a a uniquely different kind of day. Did a lot of things. Started off at the Great Salt Lake. A little filming location stuff. Stopped by some other filming locations. Ended up downtown, walking along the sidewalk at the Capitol Building. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video. The vlog. The vlog. I'm tired. The vlog. It's also kind of cold out here. It's kind of chilly, I need a jacket on.